Well, hello there, Junior Rangers. Welcome to today's program. My name is Francesca. I am an interpreter working for California State Parks here at beautiful Pismo State Beach. And today I am so excited to teach you about one of my favorite habitats, the one I'm standing right next to out here today. This is the Oceano Lagoon. So we are gonna learn about this freshwater habitat and we're gonna learn about what plants and animals live right out here in the lagoon. We're also gonna go for an adventure as we hop aboard a kayak to go explore out on the lagoon. And we're gonna do some science today. We're gonna to take a water sample to discover what tiny microscopic animals, also known as plankton, are living just below the surface. The plankton will teach us about the food web as we learn about the different plants and animals that live inside this habitat. So are you ready to do some fun learning today? Let's get started. So the first thing I want us to learn about is the word habitat, which many of you already know means home, an animal's home. So the Oceano Lagoon is a habitat that comprises of fresh water that's not too far from the ocean, which is about half a mile away from you. You might even hear the crashing waves. And this freshwater lagoon, it's not too deep. It's only about four or five feet deep up to my shoulders out in the middle, but it is home to lots of different species of animals. Great, now that we have defined what the habitat is for a lagoon, I want us now to discover the different types of plants that live around a freshwater lagoon. So looking out here behind me, does anyone recognize the different species of trees and shrubs or bushes? There's one species in particular that you'll see growing off in the distance and all around the edges of the lagoon. And the animals really like this because it provides lots of hiding spaces within their habitat to build their nests or to escape from predators or even to escape from us humans. And this tree that we're looking at is actually called the willow tree. Now that we've learned about the willow tree, that is the most dominant or most common species of tree that we see out here, off in the distance and right up here behind me, you'll also see this beautiful tall tree called the Monterey Cypress. Now big tall trees that reach up into the sky also have deep roots that keep it grounded. And these roots that go down into the soil are looking for water and nutrients. And if you see where this tree is positioned right next to the lagoon, it makes a lot of sense. Big trees need lots of good fresh water. So this habitat helps large trees thrive. And these large trees actually provide a really good vantage point for different bird species that like to roost and nest up high where they can get a good view out onto their habitat. So now let's learn about some of the animals. We'll start with the birds that call the Oceano Lagoon their home. The majestic great blue herons are perhaps one of the largest birds that call the lagoon its habitat. Now herons nest high up in the trees where they have a good view to watch out for predators. Another species of birds that nest high up in the cypress and pine trees around the lagoon include the red-shouldered hawks. And this next species of bird you'll probably identify right away as being a mallard duck. But do you know how to tell the difference between the male and the female? Take a look at the plumage or the feathers around their heads. The males have this shiny green color to attract a mate during breeding season. Ducks live their entire life around water. They are very good swimmers. They can dive down to eat small fish, small plankton, and algae. But they also need safe places to come out of the water to rest and to build their nests. Great, and now that we learned about those cool bird species, let's take a look at some of the reptiles that live around and in the lagoon. Turtles are the most common species of aquatic reptiles that you will see around fresh bodies of water. But did you know there are two species of turtles here in California? 
red-eared turtles earned the nickname sliders, which comes from their habit of sliding into the water whenever they sense danger. Red-eared turtles are a non-native species that compete with the native western pond turtles for space in the lagoon habitat. You can identify red-eared turtles by their distinctive red or yellow patch behind their eye. The native western pond turtles can live up to 50 years, but they are quite shy. You might find them basking under the sun in groups on logs or other floating objects. These aquatic turtles use their web feet to swim under water. And next up, we have the western fence lizard which are quite common out here along the trails along the Oceano Lagoon and also in many other habitats throughout California. You might recognize them as being the blue-bellied lizards, which is their nickname because of the color that the males get on their bottom belly side when they are in their breeding season. Okay, now that we've learned about the birds and the reptiles, I want us to learn about some of the small mammals that call the Oceano Lagoon its home. So the lagoon habitat supports a lot of different species. These ones we're gonna look at right now all have one thing in common though, and they are all considered to be nocturnal. Do you know what nocturnal means? If you're thinking that they're asleep during the daytime and awake at night, you're exactly right which does mean that when you're out exploring during the daytime, it might be kind of hard to see some of these animals, but they're still really cool to learn about, and they're really fun to investigate, to learn about some of the animal evidence or the clues that they leave behind. Perhaps one of the most recognizable small mammals are the raccoons, which occasionally make an appearance during the day to look for fish. We also have coyotes, which you can usually hear before you can see them, because they camouflage really well into the willows and the thick bushes around the lagoon. Now the final mammal I want you to learn about are the beavers. Oceano Lagoon is home to a small population of beavers, which are nocturnal and not very active during the day. But when I'm out on my walks around the lagoon, I am always looking for evidence of beaver activity. Now do you see those two big front teeth on the beaver there. Those teeth are used to chew into the willow bark and branches from the willow tree that we learned about earlier in the program. And I want you to take a look at this video here of a beaver pulling down a willow branch, chewing off some leaves and chewing off the branch to take it back with him to build its dam. Now beavers are also nocturnal, so sightings like this are very rare. Consider yourself lucky if you see a beaver here at the Oceano Lagoon. And of course, finally, I want us to learn about the few of the different fish species that live out here in this freshwater lagoon. This lagoon provides food for lots of different animals, including the birds and the raccoons that love to eat the fish. Us humans also like to come fishing at the lagoon, and if you do wanna come fishing with your friends or your family, just make sure you have your fishing license and do your research ahead of time about the rules and regulations. But let's dive in and learn about some of the common fish that live just beneath the surface here. Some of the native species include the bluegill, the striped mullet, the three-spined stickleback, and the Pacific staghorn sculpin. There are also some non-native or introduced species in the lagoon, including the largemouth bass and the black bull heaf. Great, and finally, you might be wondering, what do the fish eat? Does anyone know what animal is at the bottom of the food chain and what supports the entire food web out here? If you're thinking about microscopic plankton, you are on the right track. But you can't just see plankton with your naked eye. You can't just see it floating on the surface. So we're gonna have to dive on in, get in our kayaks and do some exploring to get a sample of water to take back to the lab to learn about the plankton. So are you ready to go for a paddle? Let's go. Hey everyone, I'm interpreter Mallory and I'm out here on the Oceano Lagoon having a great day kayaking. And I'm just looking at this water. This is so amazing. All the plants and animals out here. Have you ever wondered what's in the water? What's 
let's take a closer look. Well, oh, hey, look. I happen to have my special plankton net here with me. This tool is used by scientists to take samples. And this is what we're gonna use today to get our lagoon water sample. Check it out. It has a net on a long string. And at the end of the net is this little tube that will hold our sample. And this is what we're gonna take back to the lab. Okay, Junior Rangers, we're gonna be scientists together today. And we're gonna gather a sample that could be used for research so that we can discover more about what's in the water. So I think we're ready to toss our net now. So I'm gonna get a hold of this rope. And this is the fun part, here we go. Here's our net. I'm gonna pull it back in. And wow, look at that. Our sample's right here. All right, let's check out our sample. What'd we get? So this tube right here is filled with lagoon water. And at the very tip, you can see where some of the algae and other who knows maybe some microorganisms in there have accumulated so we're gonna take this back to the lab so that we can take a closer look with our microscope because we want to see what kind of living organisms are in here okay now that we've got our sample back in the lab take a look at the water do you see these tiny particles that are moving around now to get a closer look let's put this sample underneath the microscope Microscopes are tools that help us zoom in to see things up close. Now looking in the eyepiece, right away you'll notice movement. And you might be seeing that small microinvertebrate swimming around in the water and he appears to be dragging around some algae or some green tiny microscopic plants, which are also known as phytoplankton. The animal plankton, also known as zooplankton, eat the tiny plant plankton, known as phytoplankton. And together, these tiny microorganisms make up the bottom of the entire food web here in the Oceano Lagoon. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us here today for our adventure around the Oceano Lagoon. I hope you had fun learning about the different plants and animals that live inside this really cool habitat. And I hope when it's safe to do so that you and your family will join us here at Pismo State Beach for a fun nature walk around the lagoon. So now all that's left is for you to be sworn in as official Junior Rangers. And for this, I'm gonna send it over to my friend, Michelle, for you guys to recite your pledge. Hi, it's Interpreter Michelle here at Oceano Dunes District. If you're watching this, it means you've completed a virtual Junior Ranger program and it's time for the next step. Saying the Junior Ranger pledge and being sworn in as an official Junior Ranger. So if you're ready, stand up Raise your right hands and repeat this pledge after me. As a junior ranger, I promise to explore our parks and pick up litter, to protect every plant and every critter, to learn important stories of our past so that these treasured places last. I will keep our parks out of danger because I am a junior ranger. Wow, congratulations. Welcome to the team, junior rangers. We're glad to have you.